Welcome in everyone! Today we're going to be doing a fun redesigning video. I find redesigning other people's characters to be really really fun and help build up my own skill as an artist for design. Though, my main reason is I just enjoy doing it. I made a post on Facebook asking for people to drop their characters below, asking for humans, furries, and My Little Pony. The only characters that I'm not very good at drawing are robotic characters because those take a long time and I'm really lazy. <laughs> if you're one of the people who posted uh, your character on my post, do not worry if I did not choose your character. The reason I didn't choose a lot of characters were because I thought the characters were already very lovely by themselves and I couldn't think of a thing to change about them. That being said, I do want to say none of the characters I chose were bad. None of them were ugly, I thought they were cute to begin with, I just thought maybe they could use a little something extra to make them more unique or even prettier than they already were. I'm only enhancing the characters, you guys made the characters and they're already perfect. Now I do want to say that all of these changes are based on my own preferences on what I think a good character should look like. Now, if you do not like the designs, that is completely valid. Everyone likes completely different designs, and I'm just making these based on what I think is pretty and what I see a lot of people doing. That being said, our first character is gonna be a pony character. I chose them because I already really liked their color design and just wanted to enhance some of the things that I thought would make it look better. I really didn't change much other than the hairstyle and the hue a bit slightly on the colors. By the way, I have not drawn ponies in some time. I used to be really big into the My Little Pony community when Friendship is Magic was really big a few years ago. It feels like it's been such a long time since I've drawn them. And you can tell because I am very rusty with drawing My Little Pony characters. I really struggled with remembering how to draw the body correctly. But once I got the chest and the butt figured out, the legs weren't too hard to figure out. I find My Little Pony art to be a little bit easier than humanoid art, simply because the cartoony style fits in better with my own style. I very much like car cartoony art myself, so it's a lot, easy to a lot easier to draw Friendship is Magic style artwork. Of course, the hard part is when you want to make dynamic poses. If I wanted to make a different pose other than her just standing there looking cute, the legs probably would have taken me a lot longer to finish because by golly, legs are hard. <laughs> I would say leg dynamics on ponies are maybe a little bit easier because they're kind of just noodles. They're noodles with hooves, so not, not horribly awful, but still. I did add a cutie mark. Now this wasn't asked for me and I don't know if this character has a cutie mark already, but I just threw it in because I thought it fit the character and of course they can remove it at any time. I mainly just wanted to put it there because whenever I see a pony without a cutie mark, I immediately think blank flank from the show. So <laughs> I just added one. Another reason I picked this character was because it had curly hair, and I am a huge, huge sucker for curly-haired ponies, or any curly-haired character in general. Cur curly-haired furries, curly-haired humans, I just think curly hair is so beautiful, and it definitely reminds me of Pinkie Pie from the show. Pinkie Pie was my favorite character, if you didn't know, until Starlight Glimmer came into the picture, and then I was like, nope, I'm a Starlight Glimmer fan forever now. I love Starlight Glimmer. You can hate on, you can hate on me all you want, but I like Starlight Glimmer more than I like Sunset, Sunset Shimmer, okay? Hate all you want, I just can't help it. I love Starlight. 
Another fun fact is I was passing out, like I was sleep deprived while drawing this character, which says a lot because this character actually came out pretty good. I I was so tired, I could barely keep my eyes open and still somehow drew this. It's crazy how my best art comes out when I'm really sick or extremely tired. Does that happen to anyone else? Do you guys draw your best art when you're like literally passing out? It's like my brain is like just gone and somehow my arm can draw. I, I, anyway, <laughs> it came out pretty good. I'm pretty proud of the pose because I haven't drawn ponies in, I don't know, it's been like four years. So the fact that I could even draw a pony perfect it's fine i love it but like i said i didn't change much about this character at first i wanted to remove the green since i felt like it clashed a lot with the pink but i ended up adding it back at the end because i felt like the green really added something to their design and made them more unique and i didn't want to take away the uniqueness of the character um i think it was pers i think i think it was me being a biased person because I have a hard time adding green into characters I have, even though green is like my secondary favorite color, like forest green. Pink is my favorite color, which is another reason I picked this character. I really like pink characters. Like I said, I picked, I, I didn't pick, there, there are no ugly characters in the characters you guys submitted. They were all really nice. All I did was change them around a little bit. I ended up bringing the green back and I think overall they looked really nice. You will see a side by side view of the old design versus my design. In the comments let me know if you like the first one or the second one. I would love to hear your opinions. Up next is a furry character and I'm gonna be honest I am not 100% sure what kind of animal this is, what species they are, but I am assuming they're a kind of flying squirrel but I could be wrong. I didn't ask the creator if if it what species they were. I just kind of took it and ran with it. <laughs> and I was also too lazy to go check to see if they had commented what the character was. I really like the color palette on this character. She is definitely a goth girl. I definitely see goth in it. And I really wanted to keep the colors as close as possible because they were really pretty. And I don't often use colors like this in uh i don't know just there's something about it that i really like even it's like a tannish a lot of tan colors they come off kind of dull with the black it looks really nice and like i said i just want to enhance these characters without changing the whole design i don't want them to look completely different at the end i want them to still be recognizable i just want to maybe you know just make their design a little bit different so maybe the people who made them would connect to them better. Now, I didn't think I was going to draw a full body. I really didn't. But boy, when I use the symmetrical tool, I cannot stop myself once I get started. It's honestly so nice not to have to draw both sides of the body and just focus on half of the body and not worry. I don't, I don't have to like flip my canvas constantly to see if it's even because I know it's even. I don't know. Does anyone out there use a symmetrical tool? It is... Oh, it is a godsend. Once I figured out how to use that on Clip Studio Paint, I was like, yes, this is my life now. This is my whole personality. I am only going to be a symmetrical baby. And I don't really, I honestly don't use this. <laughs> I don't use a symmetrical tool that often. Lately, I've been trying to just draw it myself because I feel like when things are even, it looks a little unnatural. Unless you're like making a dops. If you're making a dops, I feel like the symmetrical tool is an amazing tool to use. But if you're making like regular artwork, that isn't like a, a headshot. I feel like this is better. It also made it a lot easier to copy the body type of the character. I didn't want to change the body type. I think it's important to keep body types as close as possible when you are recreating characters. I don't really like if you're if you're drawing a fat character I would prefer to draw them fat even though that I struggle with that I want to try and make the body type as close as possible because I feel like being inclusive is very important especially in art I did struggle with the hands so I was I was wondering if maybe I should do pause but the character had hands so I went ahead and did hands and I pulled up okay clip studio paint 
one of the best places to have ass assets that are already in the store. I have a bunch of hand assets, feet assets, clothes, shoes, heads, every asset that you could ever want Clip Studio Paint has, and most of them are free. Of course, you can buy stuff that other people are selling on the store, but most of my stuff are completely free that I have gotten from there, and it really helps. So you will see me use a asset from the store where it's just a hand pose and I copy it so I don't have to spend 5,000 years trying to draw hands. I really didn't want to spend over five hours on these character designs because then I was going to overthink the character and I would change them too much. So I really tried to keep it under four hours or three hours if possible. And also that way it's easier for me to edit when making YouTube videos. She took me around, I think, three hours or just under three hours to finish. It wasn't horribly long. Or was it two hours? Honestly, no idea. My mind forgets time. Time doesn't exist to me. It could have been five hours. could have been five years. I don't know time. I'm like a dog. If you leave me in a room with no clock or a window, I'm just going to think that I've been in there for a thousand years. It, it just, it doesn't, my brain doesn't understand time. Time is, I don't understand it. I, I'm just I'm trying to understand it but it's confusing I just try and conform to the conform like everyone else did <laughs> anyway I did give her a choker I didn't want to put too many clothes on her because I didn't want to cover up her markings that I was doing so I gave her a cute little choker that has like the little spikes on it if you ever seen chokers at Hot Topic this was really popular like in 2010 was it 2010? When was I in high school? It's been a while. Is it... Is it 2010? Guys, I don't... Time! Time is confusing. Don't ask me time. I don't understand. But it has little spikes on them. I, they used to be at Hot Topic. I don't know if they are anymore. I have not been to a Hot Topic in years because I live in the middle of nowhere with Courage the Cowardly Dog, okay? Literally nowhere. My mom is basically Muriel at this point with the amount of stuff I have to help her with. It's... It, it's fine, I digress, it's whatever. By the way, are furries always naked? Are furries, okay, so furries, they're covered in clothes. I mean, they're covered in fur. Furries are covered in fur. Are there fur, is there fur their clothes? I mean, because dogs are naked, but it doesn't bother us. I, I am just having existential crisis all over this video right now. Like, I am confused. I must be in a mood right now <laughs> recording this voiceover. Uh, I think the only big change I made to this character was adding spots to her legs and arms. I didn't want to add, I, I mean, I did want to add more, but I didn't want to add too many to like overtake the design that was already there. The creator can of course add more spots. I just made really simple spots and I think they were really nice. I also added a faded white to her chest, though I still think the black would have looked nice as well. I gave her purple eyes that would pop with her more dull fur. And her hair, I added a few highlights and stripes in them. Overall, I think this character is really pretty and I definitely stepped out of my comfort zone when drawing them because I don't usually use those colors. So it was a lot of learning experience for me that I should probably use more colors when drawing. Though I am more of a vibrant bitch, I love vibrant colors, okay? I love vibrancy. In the end, I did end up adding some more gothic makeup to her face, giving her kind of a black lip and some smoky eye. I really loved drawing this character, and I think she came out super, super adorable. Let me know in the comments if you liked the original better, or if I did do her justice in enhancing her design a little bit. I, I still really like this one. I think this might be one of my favorites that I've done. Okay, and last but not least, we're only doing three characters today because it took me forever to draw them all. The last character I am doing is a Hell of a Boss themed character. Any of you know Hell of a Boss is a show created by Vizzy Pop, who is also making Has Been Hotel. I'm not going to get into any of the controversy or anything. I myself enjoy the show. I don't know much about what happened. I don't, I just, I don't know. If you want, you can comment about it, but I just... I would prefer to keep it a positive space in my comments if, if possible, but whatever, you, you do you, boo-boo, I do not care. 
This is a hell of a boss themed character and I really enjoy drawing them and doing redesigns of them mainly because of their scar markings. So in Hell of a Boss Universe, scars turn into like white blobs on the character's skin. The imps get white blobs on their skin when they're cut or if they get exploded by fireworks. Like Fizza Raleigh is basically one giant scar. If you haven't seen the newest episode, I do recommend it. Uh, Fizza Raleigh is probably my favorite character in the whole entire, whole entire show. I cannot talk. I cannot speak. I am sitting here reading my script and I still cannot speak. Yes, this is the one video I did script. I am actually going off script saying that I scripted it. This is not in my script, but <laughs> why did I script this if I'm going off script? I don't know. Let's get back to the script, please. Um, I also really enjoy Vizzy Pop's dramatic art style. That was probably one of the biggest things that made me follow them on Twitter was I really like their art. Uh, I take a lot of elements from their art to put in mine as well because it reminds me a lot of Disney. Disney also has a lot of very dramatic art styles. Obviously princesses have like the really tiny waist, they have really big eyes, characters have really dramatic facial expressions. Uh, another style that reminds me of this is, you'll have to forgive me, I don't know the creator. It's the person who made the short film Becky Prim. Have you have you guys seen Becky Prim? It's a short film on fa on uh, Facebook on YouTube. It is really amazing. I recommend go watch it. Uh, I wish it was its own show. I feel like it may be just as good, if not better, than Vizzy Pop's Hell of a Boss, and I wish it would have gotten its own show. Anyway, I really wanted to revamp this OC since I felt like they're already a really neat character. I started off by sketching them in a dress, though looking back at the art, I am unsure what they were wearing, and that's the main reason I put them in a dress. They might have been in shorts, but I am unsure. I did look up hell of a boss characters to make sure I got the horns right. I think female imps have smaller stripes on their horns compared to the, their male counterparts. But I am unsure if that is canon or not, so please let me know in the comments if you are a hell of a boss fan and know more of the lore than I do. I think her vibe comes off more as a party girl in my art. The tight dress, the short hair, I also think, I also think resembles Millie in a way. I did also struggle with her tail since I couldn't remember how long the tip of the tail was supposed to be, but I think it came out okay. I didn't want to give her uh, too much in her hair, so I did end up removing the stripes that were that I was gonna put in there. Back in school, emo kids would have like raccoon stripes in their hair that were multicolored. I thought about doing that, but ended up getting rid of it because I felt like maybe it changed the character a little too much and just ended up staying with the purple. There wasn't much about this character I wanted to change. The main thing I wanted was her to have more special markings or scars to stand apart from other hell of a boss OCs. I noticed that a lot of her markings were on her legs, but now that I'm looking back at the art, I think those might have been leg warmers. But oh well, I wouldn't have kept them anyway, so they're, they're basically being removed and turned into markings. I did try to keep them on the legs and the arms since they had leg warmers and I thought it would be more unique that way. Maybe they hurt themselves and that's why they wear leg warmers. I think this also helps build a backstory for the character and I really hope the owner lets me know what their backstory for the character is going to be because I'm really, really interested in knowing. So ending thoughts. All these characters were amazing by themselves. None of them were bad. They were perfectly fine the way they were. I just wanted to help some people enhance some characters that maybe they were losing their connection to. I myself know how much it sucks to lose connections to characters in the fandom, the furry fandom and the My Little Pony fandom, which were the fandoms I was most in. I struggled with connecting to characters at all. No matter what character I'd buy or make or see, I just could not connect to any character because they didn't feel like something I could, I don't know, they didn't feel like me, you know? Not that your character has to feel like you for you to connect to it, but there was just nothing I could connect to about these characters. Of course, that is until today. I now have a VTuber model that I highly connect to. I feel like she matches my personality a lot better and I love her very much. 
I do also have a pet, which will be in a book that I'm making. That is right. I am writing a book about my VTuber pet. Get over it. I'm doing it. I am writing it and you will read it. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, guys. You do not have to read my book. But if you would like to share it around, I would appreciate it. But yeah, connecting to characters is really hard. And as somebody who's been in the fandom as long as I have, I've been, I've been in drama, I've been in scandals, I've been friends with bad people, I've dated awful people in the community. And I think as I've gotten older, I've realized a lot of the mistakes I've made and I've grown past them. If you want me to talk about the mistakes I made in the past, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll make a video about it. But yeah. If you guys would like to see your character or OC get redesigned or drawn in my videos, please submit them to my email. Make sure to label them redesign and art. You can type out a whole description of your character. You can tell me about the personality, name, species, gender, if they're LGBT. Go ahead and rant to me in my email and when I make another video, I will pick characters to redesign. I really appreciate you guys watching my video. It means a lot to me. I am still new to YouTube and I am trying to figure out how it works. Doing voiceovers and writing scripts is a lot harder than I thought it would be. So I give major props to all the YouTubers out there. With that being said, I'm Squishable Moon. I hope all your wishes come true. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.